Welcome back. So we are looking at uh, parti partitioned matrices, uh, and partitions are like your lines in your s for the submatrices that are inside your matrix. So if you have like a matrix A, and it's like I don't know one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, then you can partition this into like submatrices um, where you have. Like this matrix, one, two, four, five is your submatrix A11. Uh, A12 could be 3, 6. Uh, A21 could be 7, 8. And A22 could be just your matrix 9. So um, breaking up your bigger matrix into submatrices with partitions. And the partitions, um, this is just what it makes me think of. It just makes me think of uh, the, uh, the partitions in bathrooms. There's nothing deep and mathematical about that. It's, it's just, that's just what I think of. All right, so um, we have our matrix uh, like this. We can write as partitioned or block matrices. Um, and that's you. You might find um, the vocabulary block matrices somewhere if you're looking at things. Um, these blocks or submatrices um, are just pulled straight from the partitions, and um, the the subscripts correspond to which like block row and block column um, they're using. So like one one is this first block. Um, one, two is the first row, second column block, and uh, stuff like that. All right, so this helps a lot with um, doing operations, and um, I guess for, for addition, it doesn't matter all that much. It helps a little bit, but um, it just means that each of, your, each of your addition problems is slightly smaller, um, but it does help a lot with multiplication and also um, finding inverses. So uh, let's look at that. So uh, if we have uh, matrix A and matrix B that we have these partitions for, um, we can multiply A times B using these blocks that we have because they're of the proper size. Um, we're going to end up with um, B1, um, and that's going to be multiplied by this A submatrix and this A submatrix. Um, and then B2 is going to be multiplied by this submatrix and this submatrix. And so when we're multiplying it all together, um, we're effectively doing this multiplication, where we're doing a multiplication with our submatrices and adding them together. And um, so think about like what kind of uh, reasons why uh, we would have to have our, our dimensions in the way that we have them. Um, and then uh, pause the video and try out this multiplication using these submatrices, and then we'll see if we agree. So uh, we have A11 and B1, uh, which are these submatrices. And uh, what do we end up with? I think we end up with uh, 6 times 2, negative 3, negative 6, positive 6, negative 3. So it's that 15. Um, 6 minus 10 plus 6 is 10. Oh no, 2. Um, 4, 8. 4 times 2 is 8. Minus 3 plus 7 is 12. And then 4 plus 5 minus 14 is negative 5. So that's this. Okay, and then we need to do the rest of it. And I will not bore you with multiplication, so um, give it a minute. So we got A12 times B2 um, gives us negative 20, negative 8, negative 8, and 7. And so those we're going to add up. So those are both 2 by 2s, right? Now we have 2 by 2 uh, for our, I guess, our top partition of 15, 15, 12, 2. And negative 5 plus negative 20, eight, negative 8, negative 8, and 7. So when we combine those, we end up with negative 5, uh, 4, negative 6, and 
two. And so that's um, this top partition. And then we'll just choke through the same thing with those. Um, and those are slightly smaller, so maybe a little bit easier. Um, so pause the video, work that out, and then uh, we'll check it. So um, A21 times B1 is going to give us 14, negative 10. And then um, A22 times B2, so that's 7, negative 1 times negative 1, 3, 5, 2 is going to give us it's going to give us negative 2, 19. And so then when we add those together, we get 2, 9. Hmm, something went wrong. Hang on. This, this was wrong, that we have uh, negative 4 times 1 and negative 2 times 7. So it's actually negative 18. And so then this gives us negative 18 plus 19, which is 1. And so there we go, partitioned multiplication. Sweet. So uh, we have these two matrices, uh, and now we need to verify that our product of AB is our column 1 of A times our row 1 of B plus our column 2 of A times our row 2 of B, plus our column 3 of A times row 3 of B. And um, so how are you going to verify this? Well, I mean, you just multiply it out, um, which is effectively taking A and B and breaking them into three partitions um, that are conformable so that when our multiplication happens, um, we, we can get what we want. And so um, this first part, which we're doing um, right here is going to be what negative three one times a b, and that's going to be negative three uh, a, and then negative three b uh, a and b, and then plus column two of a times row 2 of B, which is going to give us um, C, D, uh, negative 4 C, and negative 4 D. And then finally, we have column 3 of A times row 3 of B. And what are we left with? We're left with uh, 2 E, 2 F, 5 E, 5f, and these are all outer products. Um, outer products meaning that when, what we're taking is two vectors, but we are multiplying them because if we if we had flipped this, then we would have gotten the inner product, right? That we have um, that we just end up with a, a, a scalar, um, just one number. But our outer product is where we're taking two vectors and multiply them and we end up with um, a matrix that is a bigger dimension um, where each of our entries in our matrix is like different components of our vectors multiplied together. And so um, what are we left with? Well, uh, all together we have indeed um, negative 3a plus c plus 2e, um, negative 3b plus d, plus 2f, and so on, a minus 4c uh, plus 5e, and b minus 4d plus 5f. And that, indeed, is our multiplication of a, b. So this is just um, like a generalization of that, uh, where we're taking our columns times our rows for our first and our second matrices, um, then their product we can represent as outer products summed together. Um, and uh, yeah, you can you can prove this if you'd like to. Uh, it's uh, it's kind of an induction -y. So um, if we have this matrix that's partitioned in this way where we have a zero in one of our um, in one of our partitions. That means that we have 
uh, a zero matrix, a matrix of zeros of the proper size that it fits with all the other things, um, the size of A11 and the size of A22. Um, and this is called block upper triangular. So um, a triangular, upper triangular matrix is where you have zeros uh, below the, the main diagonal. And um, and so and and then you have like non zeros, or not necessarily zeros, um, on your main diagonal, and then uh, above as well. And so um, if we are assuming that a one one is p by p, a two two is q by q, and that a is invertible, that there exists this uh, this a inverse, then how are we going to find a formula for a inverse? Well, we can. Um, we can try to think about what what we would need, um, like A times B must equal our identity matrix, right? And so if we take those partitions that we have, uh, A11, A12, this zero matrix, uh, A22, and multiply it by a properly sized um, B uh, that's partitioned in this way, 2, 1, and B, 2, 2, that needs to give us our identity matrix with the right number of ones uh, on our main diagonal, um, where we have P, um, P plus Q as our, as our size of our identity matrix. Um, so what does this mean? Well, we can actually, instead of just having this as a huge identity matrix, we can partition it into uh, matrices are uh, I sub P, our P by P identity matrix, and I sub Q, our Q by Q identity matrix, with some zeros there. Now, how does that help us? Well, this means that when we're doing our multiplication here, we have A11, B11. Um, plus a um, 1, 2 times b, 1, 2 has to equal our identity matrix of size p, right? Because that's how our, um, oh, sorry, a, b, 2, 1, did that wrong. Because we have this times this needs to be give us that. And what else can we say? And similarly, we also have uh, a one one times um, a one one times b one two um, from this multiplication um, plus a one two times b two two that gives us what's there, which is our zero matrix. Uh, we also have uh, B11, one, one, B12 one, times that, which is actually only going to be A22 two, two times B21, and that has to give us a zero matrix as well. And finally, um, we have B12 times B22, B12 uh, and B22 two, two times this, which is uh, just A22. Two, two, B22, that needs to give us our identity matrix of size P. So, um, how does that help us? So maybe we can start here. What does that say? Well, that means that B21 has got to be a inverse of 2, 2 times 0. And so what does that mean? Well, that means that that equals 0. Because if you're multiplying by your zero matrix, then you're going to get zero. Um, so what else can we say? Well, B21, right here, since this is zero, then, um, then we know that A11 times B11 has to give us our identity. So let's write that down, that we have a11, b11 must equal i uh, sub p. And so from there, 
Um, is there anything that we can do to figure out uh, maybe using this how to tie more things together? Well, we can say that a11 b12 has to equal like the negative of this a12 b22, right? Because in order for that to be the zero matrix, those two need to have like opposite entries. And so um, if we know that, and we know that B22, do we know anything about B22? Well, we know that B22 is A22 inverse, right? Because of this is just saying that it's our, our, our inverse. Then uh, we can rewrite this as uh, A11 B12 equals negative A12 uh, a22 inverse. And um, so we can also say that b12 is going to be a11 inverse times um, negative a12 times a22 inverse. And uh, so that's nice. I guess the scalar can come out. Um, so we end up with negative there. And so we have B12 in terms of A, our partitions of A and our partitions uh, and our A inverses. This is a, this is a one. And, um, and that's really, really nice because then we can find our inverses of our partitions um, without having to do the whole thing all together. Um, so, because it's going to be slightly less work in order to, uh, to find our inverses of um, of our submatrices, then finding our inverses of everything all together. And so um, what do we have? We have A inverse is going to be, uh, let's see, so we have B11, uh, which is going to be A11 um, one, one inverse, um, and then B12, which is negative a11 inverse a12 a22 inverse um, b21 b21 is zero from here and then b22 which is a22 inverse and there we go um, so we have this block diagonal matrix um, that gives us uh, this, assuming that we have uh, an inverse, uh, we can find the inverse of our matrix uh, by just finding the inverses of our submatrices. Cool, cool. I think that's it. Uh, let me see. Oh, one more thing. Numerical notes. These are just so that um, so that you're thinking about more of the application side of things. Um, like how you would actually compute these if you know you didn't feel like doing things by hand. So um, when we have matrices that are too big, um, because you know we tend to have matrices that do get too big for uh, for what we're dealing with in our computer um, to deal with all at once, we can partition uh, that big matrix into sub matrices, um, and then using our understanding of what partitions can do, um, we can allow our computers to be able to handle those. Um, so that's pretty cool. All right. So um, what did we talk about? Well, we can find inverses easily, I guess, somewhat easier uh, using submatrices. Um, we can think about multiplication as outer products summed together. Uh, we can um, multiply our matrices that are conformable using our block multiplication. Um, which is just treating each of our partitions as its own like, element and then multiply in the way that we had been multiplying matrices this whole time. And um, partitions are those. All right, I think that's it. Bye.